You are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, presented by the only one media group. This is the people's choice for quality interviews, celebrities and special guests. Hosted by Demetrius Dinny Reynolds. Call in to join the mix at 701-801-9813. For the complete archive of episodes, visit onlyonemediagroup.com and be sure to like us on Facebook at Vigilantes Radio. We welcome all. Enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host, Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds. Enjoy the show. Yo, what is up? And welcome to another awesome episode of Vigilantes Radio. I am your host, Danny Mussolini, and there are over 32,000 of you guys live with us on the phone lines, in our chat rooms, on the browser, and Google Hangouts. So I, I definitely appreciate you always checking out the show you guys are so loyal and faithful i wish i could send you all a turkey sandwich oh yeah no turkey for me because I'm, I'm a vegan so i'll let you guys have that right <laughs> anyway so imagine for a moment time is an illusion and you have touched eternity time is an extremely useful tool that we have devised in order to explain and to organize the world around us but it is only a tool it does not define us our essence transcends the limiting concept of time if we allow ourselves to be defined by time then we get bogged down by anger and resentment about the past anxiety and worry about the future and the limitations imposed by how old or how young we are now is the only thing we have now in this very moment right here okay in that sense, there really is no such thing as time. The past and the future, while useful concepts, do not currently exist. When we become too dependent upon the past or the future, we deny ourselves the joy of the now. When we ignore the now, it escapes and it does not return. Life must be lived right in the moment. You simply cannot be successful by doing things in the future. You can plan for the future, yes, but live in the present. And no matter how great your accomplishments have been in the past, it is only by continuing to grow and seek new challenges that you remain full of life. So guys, treasure the past, welcome the future, and live your life in the precious moment that is right now. Take that from me, Dini Mussolini. That is my word, and word is bond. You're live in the mix. Let's get this started. Yo, hello and welcome to another awesome episode of Inside the Music or Inside the Book. Inside the business where we dive into the minds of the people who create marvelous things. It feels so good to be back with you guys once again. So one time, one time for my people who are indigos, crystalline or star seeds, or for my vigilantes audience family. And two times for my people who are vegetarian or vegans. If you're like me, we are averaging over 37 thousand live listeners and we've been at this for four solid years i appreciate all you guys who've been rocking with the kid on this journey and we're still evolving baby it is all because of you most definitely we are the people who have dedicated their lives to music spirituality business literature art movies and research in every aspect and we want to allow you an opportunity to tell your story man we've had celebrities on our show from grammy award winning artists to nominees, to actors, comedians, CEOs, technology geniuses, visual artists, from authors to professors and aliens, or people who think they're aliens. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from. Come on our show and talk to me. So check it out. To book your interview, I just 
share a real cool story, email me at the radio at only one media group.com. And that's V as in Victor. I'm passionate about what I do, just as passionate about what you do. And together, yes, together, we can get your voice heard by the people who should hear it. So let's create something incredible. You know the number to dial 701 801 9813. Text that number to your buddy right now and tell them to tune in to connect with us or our guests. Or you can hop in the mix directly from our website, onlyonemediagroup.com. Right from the homepage, you can slap that go live button and you'll be right here live in the mix and in the chat room with all of us. Feel free to shoot over some questions to ask our guests while they are here. But only as time permits, sometimes my guests and I talk entirely too much and we take up the entire hour. And as always, all episodes are available for free download and you can grab that from either spricker.com forward slash only one media group itunes youtube or any app from the google play or itunes store or over at our website and that goes for every single episode that we ever aired how would you love to take your business to the next level well now you can just visit classytechnology.com let us simplify technology for your business our services include website and business mobile app development local seo business technology coaching digital marketing even online training courses that's classytechnology.com why wait book your free technology consultation today by calling 734-215- 7675. Put the passion back into your business and let the team at Classy Technology handle everything for you. That's ClassyTechnology.com, the technology stylists. Well, you guys are in a treat tonight. Uh, it is the GC interview, and I'm your host, as I said before, Dini. <laughs> Dini Mussolini. So, our interviews go beyond the music, beyond the blogs, the books the businesses the movies or films if that's what you prefer to call it and into the minds of the people who create it from researching our guests mining for details and listening reading or watching everything we can our interviews are designed to bring out the best answers possible uh, we're like tmz like digging out all your secrets and catching you in weird odd moments not nah, just kidding about that um worth a shot though right but yeah, we, we do like thought-provoking questions that have some real substance. No shade at uh, TMZ, none whatsoever. Um, we we're just trying to exist among you media giants out there. But we're we're doing all right now. You know, thirty-seven thousand every show. Sometimes we're a little over that. Sometimes we're a little under. But thirty-seven is a great number, and I'm glad for you guys. So, you know, a sincere warm welcome to GM- GC. That's about to say GMC. <laughs> Think about vitamins. Uh, they are a duo known as G Swag and Chills. So we'll have an absolutely amazing time talking with them about their music uh, and, and most importantly, their single title, Boss. And uh, we really don't want to give away too much with me just, you know, saying what we're going to cover right here. So that is a perfect time to say hey GC you guys are now live in the mix with all of us how's it going and... all right all right what's going on hey 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 what's up what's up what's up <laughs> happy to be here I'm happy to be here yeah definitely <laughs> alright uh, there's two of you of course it's a duo I like duos um <laughs> swag and chills Sound like almost yeah. a Bunny and Clyde thing, there, right? Yeah, yeah something like, like that. <laughs> oh yeah, I like that. I like that. <laughs> All right, so I guess we should start like right there, right, with the formation of GC. Like, how did that happen? Okay, I mean, basically, it just started with uh, us realizing that we make our best music together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. It started off with me pretty much being at the forefront and releasing uh, mixtapes and albums and stuff like that. And uh, with her coming behind me and releasing uh, a few singles of our own, and we was getting ready to do an album for her, but you know, things didn't go as planned and we had to go a different direction. Mm -hmm. You know, with that being said, we just realized, man, we make the best music when we do it together. I mean, from slow song to fun song to dark songs to deep and conscious songs man like all of that so i just think it just 
comes down to the fact that we perform better together. And even, like I said, when I was a solo act and she was a solo act, I was her hype man and she was my hype man. I mean, we was GC, we just didn't realize it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, All these yeah. years. All these years, right. <laughs> Cool deal. So I, I'm not always the brightest crayon in in the coloring uh, crayon box, but um, you know I kind of stock you guys' uh, IG page, um, and it, it kind of looks like you guys are, uh, are, are a couple. And I really didn't want to you know put that out because you, you guys may have <laughs> like okay. significant That's others, right. and you know they may get mad because they see some pictures like that. But uh, <laughs> so how, what, what's the chemistry like? You know. Um. We've been together actually for like 10 years and uh, we've been married for about seven, getting ready to be eight in August 21st. Yeah, yeah. So that's where the chemistry like um, came about. Um, like when we first met, uh, he told me he did music and I thought that was pretty cool. And I told him I did music too. He, he didn't believe me because he was looking at me like, oh, you like this good girl. You don't do right, Hold on, let me, let me explain myself. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> this is the reason why her name is Chills because nobody expects any of that stuff to come out of her. So whenever she starts rapping or whenever she starts singing, especially when she starts rapping, it's just like it's an it's an shock. It shocks people. So you know, it shocked me. I mean, I'm like, just, you know, man, this chick can't rap. You know what I'm saying? At the time, I felt like I had been rapping for so long. I'm like, man, oh, she can't rap. You know, I, you know, I freestyle and all that stuff. She started rapping and I was like, whoa, like she can <laughs> rap. Like, like the chick can actually rap. I mean, I mean, bars and all of that stuff. She ain't just putting on like she can actually do it. So, wow. <laughs> but that's how we met though, because like I said, um, yeah. our first date, she started rapping and that's when I fell in love, man. I swear on everything I love. <laughs> <laughs> love at first rap. <laughs> that's right, yeah. Like, you just ask somebody uh, no, no, man, no. just. Love at first bar. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Exactly. Literally. Because we met outside the bar. Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. Wow. How yeah. ironic. Yeah. <laughs> How ironic. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, 10 years together, seven years married, going on eight. Congratulations for that, by the way. Um, Thank you. And, and you, know the, you know the stats about African American families, black families. Um, yeah. yeah. Single parents, you know. So, definitely congratulations for that. I'm black myself, so I can say that, you know, and make it yeah. sound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, definitely congratulations. Uh, wow, that's wonderful. Thank um, you. Second thing, I kind of got the same feel that G Swag got. Now, I didn't see, like, your pictures when, it, when I got the, the uh, I can say, the PR write up. It just said GC, a duo. G swag and chills. I'm expecting two dudes. One is chill. He got his arms crossed, <laughs> and the other one, you know, he swagged out. So then I seen, yeah. Then I hit the Instagram and I seen a picture of chills. I say, okay, you know, they got the song Boss. She must be like the label owner. Okay, they wrote the song about her. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know, I go down and I'm like, no, no, that's she must be chills and he's G swag. Nah, she can't rap. Like she, she's a boss. She's a she's the boss. And yo, I put on the tune and I was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> Man, Jesus. Yeah, I get, I kind of get that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Guys rock. Oh, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate it. We appreciate yeah, it. I, so, any more history about, you know, uh, the formation of the group? Uh, I guess I can say it like this. Uh, basically, when, when we first started, like I said, she was like my hype man, basically. And mm -hmm. so we was like traveling around everywhere doing shows for labels. Yeah. And so we did one in particular show and uh, uh, for Def Jam. And uh, like I said, she was my hype man that time. And uh, uh, nobody expected her to get up there and actually be my hype man. So when she got up there and, and started hyping me up, everybody was just, <laughs> they dropped, they, uh, they jaws hit the ground. And yeah. they just like, whoa, like she, 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 she with you? Like she rapping? So it was just, it was one of those things. Yeah, so. I get that a lot. Like, like when um, we was doing shows and stuff, uh, they'll see me and think that I was the model or whatever, you know, or whatever you want to call it when you see me. But then when I open my mouth, people be blown away. Like, she really yeah. can rap, you know. <laughs> I just, dope. you know, I just put my effort into what I do, yeah. and that's what you know. That's what makes a grown artist is putting the effort in what you love to do. You're right about that. So individually, though, like, 
How did you know that music was something that you guys had to do individually at first before the formation, before you guys even met? Um, Actually, when I was a little girl, I used to sing all the time. I was into uh, R&B. I'm still into R&B. And um, when I got a check little older... Check out Tell Me to Stop. Uh, <laughs> I was check out Tell Me to Stop. Uh, when I got older to about the eighth grade, my brother, he, um, shout out to D. May, he actually introduced me into doing rap. Uh, I thought it was fun, you know, being being young, trying to rap, and he the one that geared me into wanting to do it. He was he a lot. Uh, he's like three years older than me, so uh, it just made me want to do it. He and he like uh, involved me in the stuff that he did, and I thought that was pretty cool. Big brother letting the little sister rap, you know, get around his friends and try to rap, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, he would let me listen to all his hip-hop music. I remember when he, like, going from school and I'd be at home, I'd just sit back and listen to, like, Lil Wayne. His, Lil Wayne was one of his big fans, Cash Money. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I, would, I would bump that all the time. When he come home, I'd try to hurry up. He's like, no, 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 listen, you can listen to it. So he was one of those big, cool brothers, and he's still a big, cool brother. <laughs> all right, I mean, I guess for me, for me, it had to be my my brother and my cousin starting a group called Something's New. And so they started the group, but I was so young, they wouldn't let me be a part of it. So I would cry to my mama, you know, stuff like that, you know, try to tell them. <laughs> Shout out to Illinois Music, man, the Esoteric Empire. Uh, they also got websites out, man. Y'all go check that out, man. It's not something, of course. Um, yeah, but back to what I was saying, they had formed a group when I was so young. I was telling, telling all the stuff that they wouldn't let me be a part of the group. And so to solve the problem, my mom just started buying me my own stuff. And like she bought me a keyboard. Uh, shout out to Yamaha because that was the first thing I had. Like I had a Yamaha and it recorded beats. So you could re uh, record the beats on the, uh, with the keyboard. The keyboard. Yeah. So um, after that, I got uh, she bought me a karaoke machine. And uh, I start making my own beats, writing my own music, yeah. um, recording on a karaoke machine, on cassette tape. You know what I'm saying? You record on one side, then you flip it over and record on the other side. Yep. Uh, stuff like that. And so um, they start hearing what I was doing. And they was like, you know, dang, you know, I was you know, maybe about 12, 13, something like that, 14. I mean, the music sounded, <clears throat> excuse me, the music sounded nothing like it sounds today. But the fact that I just took it upon myself to go ahead and, uh, show them that I could do music and I could really do what they was doing, you know what I mean? So I didn't need to be included in what they was doing because I had my own thing going on. And so I think that was one of the uh, defining moments of my life is pretty much just showing that I could put together music myself if they didn't want to involve me or put me, you know, make me a part of their group. But eventually, I guess I proved myself somewhere because, you know, they had like matching t-shirts and everything like that. And, uh, and so, they ended up going and get me a matching t-shirt, you know, to go along with them. And I'm in junior high school, man, flexing. It was cool, man. So, definitely cool deal. I uh, when you was using the tapes, did you have like the recordable ones? Uh, sometimes, sometimes I went and bought a case of tapes from like the local RC RCA when they had those and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> old school. <laughs> but most of the time, man, I was just dubbing over like Keep Sweat. My mama, my, my OG keeps sweat. I was dubbing over my, uh, uh, like I said, I was dubbing over my, uh, my OG keeps sweat and, uh, uh, you know what I mean, public announcement <laughs> and uh, okay. a trick daddy stuff like that, you know. Uh, yeah. But I, I just needed tape, so I just grabbed and used whatever I could. You know what I mean. Okay, because I'm about to share a little secret with you uh, about putting, okay. you know, tissue in the corners of the tape and dubbing yeah. over. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you, you hear? You hear? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We had some like the same stuff, like the Yamaha with the karaoke machine. We couldn't really afford uh -huh. tapes back then, so we just grabbed the OG tapes and double. Yeah, <laughs> I just started dubbing it over. You know, yep. she go looking for her, uh, her too short. You know, oh. it's yeah. my song on that. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would like recording on my uh, my mom when I was little. She had got me this light up boombox, so. Anytime I wanted to do my music, I would record my music on there. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, this is like the new generation. They spoiled. They, like, got it made, yeah, you know? Right, right, yeah. They all on <laughs> iPads and Xbox man. and Playstations with the garage. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, it's that. like, it's like, it's like 
easy for them. They don't realize how easy yeah. it is for them to record. Like for us starting off, it was like you had exactly. to work your way up to getting it out there, you, you know? know? The only mixes that they had available were those big old mixes that had like you know what I'm <laughs> 20 tracks and they cost yeah. thousands yeah, of dollars. Yeah, like, yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? I, and that was yeah. $30 an hour. When you were a kid, you couldn't afford that. You know what I mean? So, they give you like yeah. this uh, this v- VHS size tape. I'm like, okay, here, here's your recording. I'm like, well, I'm going to play this on. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. So speaking of like the times, um, you guys are, it's 2018 now. You guys are dropping singles. Um, what has been your motivation, you know, throughout the years where, you know, things change, technology change? Um, but what is what is different this time around with the new singles that are dropped in 2018 compared to all the other projects and singles that you ever dropped before? Um, I think it's maturity, man, and growth. And everything that we do now is has got to be professional. Like we we always got to dot every I and cross every T. I mm-hmm. think that's the big difference. Like uh, like not saying that the stuff we did previously ain't ain't as good or ain't you know, beating the thump and the slapping. It's just the new stuff we got. We just developed the the perfect sound Mm -hmm. that I think is unique to us. And with that being said, we make sure that our our recordings, you know, the studio we go to, we make sure that's professional and puts out out a professional sound so we're going to look like a million dollars as well. So we make sure we do photo shoots maybe every month or two, Mm -hmm. something like that. Definitely if we have a... a, um, something that we need we need to promote or a single that we need a cover for. We always make sure we do professional shoots. We also make sure that uh, our covers are professional top notch or, you know, to the best of, you know, the, the budget that we have in place. We make sure that our music videos look like a million dollars because all that stuff is important, man. You ain't finna, like, like you go, same thing goes for anything, just like religion. You're not finna go to a church that's broke down and riggedy. You know, you want to go to the church where the pastor look like he's doing good. All the members look like they're doing good. You know what I mean? I know, I know, you know what I mean? I know that's terrible not to use that for an example, but you know what I mean? That's what no, no, that's a good outlook. That's a good outlook, yeah. You don't want to work for somebody that pull up in a beat-up station wagon. You want to work for the dude that pull up in a, uh, a, in a Ferrari. You know what I mean? You want to work for the dude that pull up in a Mercedes Benz. You don't want to work for the dude that's... Uh, 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 <laughs> got his lights cut off last night you know what I mean he barely can pay his own bills why would you want to work for that guy you want to work for the guy that's got it together like you said got photo shoots professional photo shoots websites or whatever um, Twitter everything social media everything lined up mm-hmm. we make sure that we invest more heavily than we ever have before uh, before we we would invest invest but not really because when you're younger I guess you just I ain't gonna say when you're younger because some younger people get it and the music that they put out would be terrible and everybody would be like, how did they get on well they they figured it they out they figured it out you can't <laughs> do don't hate the player hate the game you know what I mean you can't sound like a hate all your life you know what I mean so you just basically gotta know that whatever they did they figured it out and that's why they're making money yeah you know yeah. artist A can have all the talent in the world but if you don't invest in itself you know believing in yourself is investing in yourself if you want people to pay, uh, pay attention to you, you have to pay attention to get attention. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yep. So part of our station is online. The other part is stationed out in uh, Hollywood, California. And uh, we broadcast out of Mississippi, which is uh, actually my hometown. So I'm wondering, with the Internet being the way it is, like it's vast, you can reach so many people. How far mm-hmm. have you actually seen your music reach? Um. With the with the power of YouTube, we've reached all the way to other to countries like Israel, uh, yeah. China. Um, like we've reached all over the world, and like when, like I said, when we put our video out, uh, and it did the twenty seven thousand views. Yeah. <clears throat> Starting off, it did like twenty thousand views. We was like super excited about it. Like man, that's the most views we ever got. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> on one single project, and so then. With that, uh, you know, with that getting that many views, we noticed that we was getting comments from people from, like I said, Israel and China, people from all over the world, uh, Mexico and Florida, just all over the country and all over the globe. So basically, I think that's why, you know, that was some of the places that we reached that really surprised me was over in, like, Britain, yeah. Canada, 
yeah. you know, places like that. And surprisingly, largely, our fan base kind of subsides in other countries. You know what yeah. I mean? Which is pretty cool. You know what I mean? Definitely. And uh, we're just promoting on the outside in, hoping that we can just kind of build a buzz that's so big that the world just kind of catch on. Yeah, and then I, I think it's cool our videos on World Star too. So yeah, that was that cool. also, yeah, videos on World Star. So that kind of um, they kind of yeah, yeah. kind of everything opened up. And yeah, stuff, you know, stuff started really taking off. Yeah, obviously. yeah. So the views shot up after um, we found out the videos on World Star, and other people found out too. So it went from twenty thousand to now twenty seven. So I thought that was pretty cool. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, yeah. World Star is a very funny platform. I mean, it's great for exposure. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> but it's the people and their comments. Oh. Yeah, man, they oh, brutal. Oh, and, and they they not afraid to get anybody. Like, ain't nobody right. off limit. Nobody. Like, I, was off they, limit. I was in tears. I was in tears reading <laughs> some of those uh, uh, trolls. Like, I was in tears reading the trolls. And my, you know. Uh, uh, chills like oh, no. uh, 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 slag. don't read all that don't read that stuff I, yeah it's pretty negative but, but to me I'm not, you know it's funny to me because you know you can tell a lot of people just create profiles just to troll and I thought it was yeah, hilarious yeah, yeah. a lot of those jokes were creative like you oh, said yeah. that you thought about that right I, I, I be so, thinking the same thing like a lot of these people need to be comedians because these, these jokes are off the chain but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah that's, that's just like I be seeing music that's just, just flawless and they just get on there just yeah, say, oh, something. No, I just, say something so crazy. I just yeah. think it's the internet period. Yeah. Like if they see you booming and they, they see you, you know, you got it, they're gonna say something. It don't matter how good the material is. So you just gotta prepare yourself and, and just wave it off and say, you know what, I'm getting somewhere don't let that negativity right. like stop you. And then again you also <laughs> depend on your fans on your supporters because um you know, eventually I had a uh I had a um a a, a, a fan commented on that I mean a pissed fan comment on the uh, on the video and they was like oh man don't be studying these trolls man they don't know music and you know just you know <laughs> I mean I'm talking about all caps you know what I mean like, uh, shout out shout out to uh, Killer Man yeah uh, Q, uh, Q McBride man like uh, uh, I'm not always sure that was him but I'm almost sure that was you know one of yeah my, it was somebody the like I said they got on there and they didn't like it you know what I mean so Damn. they basically uh, got on there and, uh, <laughs> and, and like I said all caps you yeah. know, so. <laughs> getting it in. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. Like, hey, no, uh, uh, this DC, y'all keep pushing, y'all doing what y'all supposed to do. You know, yeah. like the private. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, yeah, I appreciate I, that, man. A lot of artists I've interviewed that's been on World Star, they, they, they're not as optimistic as you guys. They take it as hate, but I'm like, you know, look at the look at the numbers. You know, they may be yeah. typing off, adding to your listenership. You right. know, don't yeah. don't don't look at the hate. Don't look at it as hate look at it as they looked at it they're providing their opinion whether they're trying to be funny or not numbers still don't exactly. lie exactly they yeah. listen. And, yeah. and that's the point is to get people to listen exactly. they're going to have an opinion whether they like it or not you know and they're entitled to it yeah they're entitled oh, yeah. to it I understand that part of it I mean people hate it on Jesus come on that's right. <laughs> right. And Christ still hated on to this day. Yeah, this still this day. Yeah. Man, ain't even around to finish up. Yeah. <laughs> you can go down there somewhere in China and lose your head over it. So you know. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, I mean, right. I look at it like this: like as much as they was, as much as they were uh, posting negative comments, like the views were going up. Mm-hmm. You know, and. It, so I thought it was, I'm like, okay, well, keep going, you know what I mean? Like, I'll get a positive comment, then I'll get, like, five negative comments, you know what I mean? Then I'll get a okay kind of positive comment, then I'll get, you know what I'm saying? So I was just, like, I enjoyed the ride, man. I just thought it was cool. I thought it was fun. Um, either way it go, we make a little bit of money because we monetize everything. So it was mm-hmm. just, you know, everything is all good to me, man. Hey. I don't see anything. Everybody deserves their own opinion, man. I mean, you listen. Like you said, you watched it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So. But that's like, that's just preparing you for, like, if you're trying to get big, you're trying to be big. And that should, that just come with the territory. You you just got to shake it off and keep pushing. Like, if you allow those negative people to say something or if they don't support you, even if it's small, 
you're never going to get nowhere. They, right. They're going to want you to be buried. They're going to want to sweep you under the rug. Crabs in the bucket. You know, just mm-hmm. because they're like, oh, she getting somewhere. Let me not uh, mention her name because it's all about politicking. Yeah, that's all. You know, oh, yeah. so. <clears throat> but, that, but that's cool. That's safe. Yeah. That's what they like to do. But at the end of the day, you can't let the politics stop you from, like, getting out there. And you just got to push yourself. All publicity is good publicity. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because the people that's haters go, hey, let me find out what all this hate is about, you know? Let me see what exactly. they're talking about exactly. Let me watch this video and see if I see the same thing they're saying. Exactly. Right. Yeah, definitely. All right. Um, it's always incredible to learn about, you know, new artists and, and, and listen to their, you know, their music, <laughs> their own unique element and style like you guys. Um, what would you say is the toughest thing to gain the attention of the rest of the world? I'll say um, pretty much investing in yourself because really to get noticed it's all about how much money you're willing to put for how much you try to invest in yourself and your, in your craft because um, you can have the most talented person in the whole entire world but if he's not investing in himself if he don't have you know enough money to put behind himself then he's not going to get as far as you know, artist B that maybe ain't as talented, ain't as talented, but you know what I mean? Willing to invest in himself. So I think the hardest part in, in order to get attention is A, get past the politics because it's all about politics and it's like everybody knows somebody to do music in yeah. nowadays music industry. So you have to be careful with who they have an alliance with this person or that group or, you know what I mean, because it can get get that way. That's why you have to <clears throat> be able to take your stuff to another level by investing, because the average person feel like they're so good, the average artist feel like they're so good that they don't need to invest. Yeah. And so what happened is they won't invest while you're investing. And so you start getting better platforms and stuff like that. So, I mean, I think the hardest part of it is investing in yourself because money don't come cheap. Nobody's willing to give you anything. So yeah. everything you get, you got to work for it. Mm-hmm. And when I say work for it, you work for it and you put the money behind it. You put the money behind it and you work for it. And then you wash and repeat and you do it over and over and over again. The more that you can invest in yourself, the more you'll notice that your buzz start building. Because you know, for us, that, that's what it is for us. It's like when we started investing in ourselves more and making sure that all the music was tip top because that's like I think that got to be the third thing you got to make sure your music videos look professional like a million dollars you got to make like I said you got to make sure your photos are on the point and that you do photo shoots often you got to make sure that you do shows and just shows off you know professional professional platforms and not necessarily local or local level not saying there's nothing wrong with doing local shows it's just you have to build a certain brand for more people to look at you like you know what I mean? In a certain mm-hmm. aspect. So oh, yeah. really putting the money behind yourself, making sure that you professional in every aspect. Even if somebody say that you you, you suck, your music suck, it's trash, it's garbage, and you take it off the internet, uh, don't let nobody else hear it. You know, you can't, you know what I mean? You just take it, harness it, and use it. You know what I mean? And continue to invest in yourself and push. Definitely. So, in, in my honest and humble opinion, um, and talking about the release of your single called Boss, it looks like a fantastic performance of timeless material presented in a very professional way that really endures the look into your uh, music. But of course, not all music is for everyone, and we all know that, but where do you see the connection is that people will make to the music and the performance from your perspective? Um... I'll say that basically everybody, it's, it's something in our music for everybody. Yeah. And I think that you just got to go through the catalog. I mean, it's something for everybody. And if you were to listen to Boss, I think anybody can listen to that. I mean, of course, the edited version because, you know, you got you know people Bob and kids and stuff. But outside of that, I mean, I think it's something in it for everybody because everybody want to be a boss. I mean, who wants to be the worker? Who wants to be the employee? Right? Nobody. You want to be the boss. You, you want to be the one that's calling the shots. There's nothing wrong with that. And it really just comes from working hard. The harder you work, the more that you can boss up. You know, for me, bossing up has several different meanings. It has several different definitions. 
because if you work overtime at your job, mm-hmm. that's bossing up because you just went and got that check. You know what I mean? You didn't settle for average. You went and you worked overtime, put an extra hours, you got time to have or whatever it was. If it was your nine to five, if you were selling drugs, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't necessarily condone it, mm-hmm. but if you were selling drugs and you really worked hard at it and you yeah. made sure that, you know what I mean? You saved your money and all that stuff. Uh, I guess <laughs> you didn't get half your own supply. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, and, you, and, you, and you stacked your money and you put it behind your music. I don't care if you sound like uh, uh, <laughs> uh, Randy Stimpy. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, you deserve to be where you at. So, like I said, but every, it's something in our music for everybody. Because one minute we might do a, a slow R&B song. Then the next minute we might do something fun. Just, you know, they may be playing in the club. Then we might turn around and do something conscious. conscious, uh, conscious uh, you know, talking about Puerto Rico and... Um, you know what I mean? The devastation with the floods and uh, you know, the fact that people starving and, and people really don't care. You know, how Puerto Rico went without lights for months. I think they still don't got lights in all of Puerto Rico. But like, it's, it's insane and that, that, that that's like a part, that's a part of the, United States, of the United States, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, there's something for everybody in all of our music, man. Who don't like being a boss, man? Yeah, I can agree with that one, yep. Um, guys, do outside perspectives ever influence your music? Like, in terms of the way that the world works, I heard you mention uh, things that happen in Puerto Rico, or uh, do even outside music influence your music? Um, sure. Like, you, I feel like um, you can learn from anybody. I mean, I, I think you can you shouldn't just be stuck in yourself saying, Oh, I know, I know, I know and you ain't gonna grow as an artist if you know everything. I feel like as an artist you grow in years to get better. <clears throat> so, um, that's how I feel with my music, like I'm not the same person I was ten right. years ago. Exactly. But I feel great to know and and I also love to say, Dang, I learned a lot and I feel like learning from my mistakes achieved uh for me to be a better artist right and uh, you know um, I feel like if you say that outside influences don't influence your music I think you will be being a little dishonest you know I can't speak for everybody but for me I think my everyday life is my music I mean if I say big chrome on my truck that's the Ferris wheel ride never put your face in man they'll fail you every time you know what I mean like that's something that I'm actually living it's the reason why I, I spit those bars it's the reason why I, I spit those lines because they, they true to me you know what I mean you know I like rims you know what I mean mm-hmm. <laughs> they gotta be big ones you know when I put them on my car you know what I mean so that's just that's basically what it is it's just the truth you know what I mean right you know it's the end uh, like how could you ignore what's going on in the world in the world and music is supposed to reflect what you're going through. Music is supposed to reflect what's going on inside of you emotionally, you know what I mean, and what you endure and encounter daily. So, I mean, I don't care if you worked at Taco Bell. If customers are rude to you, that's what you should be rapping about, you know what I mean? Oh, I got to get up out of Taco Bell. It's hell. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? So that's what I think. I think it's just one of those things where this is you gotta rap about what's true to you you know what I mean and what's true to me is what I rap about and so yeah okay pretty much yes sir <laughs> so you know there's a lot of independent artists some at like the very beginning of their stages uh, into music you know that listen to the show and you guys got some amazing ideas great visuals great plans um, but for those those newbies out there, I really I really don't like using that word newbies. But for those uh, <laughs> just venturing yeah. into like the music business part of music, um, what is the real key to overcoming the challenges that you guys face in indie music today? Well, I say um, I say I'm still a rookie. Mm. I mean, mm-hmm. I say I'm still a newbie because. I feel like until I see my first number in my bank account, like I'm, I'm not, like I'm professional right now. 
Um, we do everything and we carry ourselves in a professional manner. But I feel like in order to look at yourself as having a formula, you have to have a certain amount of success behind you. And, and, and which I can't say that we're not successful. I feel like everything that we do and everything we've done was a blessing and we're very blessed and, and we're very close to doing what we want to do and what we're trying to figure out. Yeah. Um, it's pretty much trial and error. And to me, it would be like the blind leading the blind. Because, if I, you know, I can't tell you how to mop your floor if I don't have a mop myself at home. Yeah. And, but I'm just telling you, man, I know how you can get a mop. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just go to the store and, you know what I mean? Yeah, I can tell you go get a mop. But until I go buy the mop, mop the floor myself, then I can't really tell nobody or be able to, you know, show them. Like I said, going back to, like, the pastor coming to church sharp. Who want to go listen to the pastor if he come in flip-flops and the tank top with barbecue stains on it? You know what I mean? <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> like, man, let me get up out of here, man. You know what I mean? This dude ain't the real deal. He a trade, he, he a shade, not a shade tree mechanic, but he a shade tree uh, 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 pastor. You know what I mean? Or he a shade tree artist. You know what I mean? So, But I guess one thing that I could do is tell them what I do know which a lot of the times artists don't be too open to accepting advice. Like I said, once again, from somebody that's not on BT or, you know what I mean? Um, it's just it's just hard, but I don't know. The advice I would give is just invest in yourself. Don't be afraid. Take a chance on yourself. Yeah. Do not be afraid. You don't, you'd rather say, I spent, I don't know, I'm just going to throw a number out there. This ain't how much I spent, but $10,000. On my career, well, no, actually, through my career, I probably actually have spent that much, maybe more. You know, mm -hmm. investing, investing in yourself. You know what I mean? And just mm -hmm. that's the main thing. And don't listen to what nobody say unless they're close to you. Then I mean, they love you and they just trying to tell you, oh, you off beat or you know, what I mean? whatever it is, they trying to help yeah. you out with. Yeah. And another thing, stay prayed up. Oh, like, that's number like, one. <laughs> like prayer, like to me, prayer gets you through all your battles, all your tribulations, even when like. You feel lost and nobody supporting you. Prayer, to me, prayer is what gets me through my music. Yeah. You know, the Most High is my inspiration. The Most High gives me ideas to create and be creative on my music. So if you, you know, if you believe in the Most High and you feel like you lost in direction, he'll direct you. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah, I mean, I mean not to cut you off or nothing, but, you know, just to add to the, uh, to, to the question that he was asking is, I, I mean, we basically would, right? I mean, so don't you laugh? Mm -hmm. Don't you, like, offer advice here and there if somebody asks? Do, yeah, do you do that now? yeah. I give advice all the time, you know. So, yeah. So it just depends on that person. If they really want to listen and um, if they already had their mind made up on what they want to do, you know, it's going to be hard for them to be like, oh, I don't get what she's saying. You know, I'm going to do I'm going to try it my way, you know, so... You know, but I think the inspiration is what um, make people say, hey, that will make people listen more when they see you making those power moves. Yeah, when they see you making the moves. You know? And I think that's the best way that people learn. I think that's the best way artists will learn. So if I was like to be a manager or help somebody or to, a, a mentor somebody, I would basically just tell them just chill around. Like, just watch the moves that we make. Because everything that I do, you could do the same thing. You know what I mean? All, all it takes is a phone call. Like, most of the time when, when I do things, like world star it's a phone call or it's research and all you have to do is just take time out of your day to take yourself seriously and be like okay let me find out uh how i can get on a breakfast club does it cost if it does how much okay let me figure out how to make that money up or uh, let me let me figure out how much i can you know let me figure out how to get on bt you know how to, how do mainstream art artists go about it it has to be some kind of way that they go you know somebody they go through to um get their videos approved and all that stuff so you just kind of gotta mm -hmm. hang around i would like be like all right you see i did this interview with uh vigilante radio he gave out the number when i was doing the interview call the radio station yeah right you know what i mean call him and, and see how much he you know he charged you to, uh to uh to get an interview if he charged you just don't know so right. for me is you don't know unless you find out yeah. but invest in yourself if I was to talk to a younger me that would be the main thing I, I would say because yeah, cause if I had young, any regrets it would be that yeah because when you're young you expect somebody to hand you something 
when you're young, you expect somebody to throw you a check and you boom, and that ain't how life works. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not you, at all. Then all these years go by and you be mad. You're like, why ain't it working? Why ain't it working? And it ain't working because you're not open minded to the fact that you got to invest in yourself as an artist. Right, right, right. Definitely. So, yeah, I mean, I would just tell an artist invest in yourself heavily. Believe in yourself more than anything. If your spouse say quit rapping, you know what I mean. Go sleep in your tr- your your car for ten days. Let her know I'm, it means that much to me. You know what I mean. <laughs> no seriously, you know what I mean. Like it means that much to me. Sometimes you gotta let people know you'll lose me. Oh, <laughs> you'll lose me because <laughs> because this music is is a love of my life as well. So you know what I mean. When, you, when people see you taking it that serious. Even if you suck, they'll figure ways to help you get better. You know what I mean? They'll oh, yeah. figure ways to get you coached or coach you themselves. And basically, you know what I mean? Oh, try beats like this. And, or listen to a, a mainstream artist and see, this is why you need, you need to make songs like this. You know, stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. Yep. And, and that, that's a great point you make. Um, some people don't want to listen to that. Their ego is in the way. Yeah, that's yeah. very true. Yeah, they... they and then you know it'll it take a person to, to like real, they won't even admit that they have an ego and all rappers I don't care who it is you got some sort of ego oh you're not a rapper if you don't have an ego man. you're not a rapper if you, you don't have you got some ego. sort of a pinch of an ego but when you could be honest and say damn I got an ego I need to humble myself exactly you gotta learn how to <laughs> Learn how to uh, hold them. Learn when to yeah, hold them. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta you gotta humble yourself. I don't give a care if you got a pinch of ego. You gotta humble yourself and be open minded to learn and to listen. But it takes it's, it's up to that artist if that's what they want to do. And that's what grew me as an artist is being the older I got, the more humble I became. <laughs> yeah, it takes growth to be humble and to be honest. Look at yourself and say, "Damn, that ain't working." And you, so let me try you know, it you know, you gotta, you gotta be honest and be like, what ain't working? Okay, so with that being said, can I add something with that? Yeah. Real quick. All right. So what you saying that, like, going back to another point, like that's why, that's why I guess that's another thing that I would tell an artist right now mm. is your career is like a vehicle. It has tires, it has an engine, it has all that stuff. Mm-hmm. When you get into your vehicle and and, and it don't start. Mm-hmm. Do you just sit in the vehicle and just keep trying to start it? Or do you get out, try to figure out what's wrong with it? Yeah. You know, do you get out the car and say, let me see. Okay, you might not even have an engine. You might not even have wheels. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So you get out and you basically just, uh, you check your car. You check your tires. You check your battery. You know, look and see if you need a starter. You don't know what it is. Maybe you need a starter. That starter being you need a PR. You need a PR firm behind you. Somebody that's going to be on your side and get you out there. Maybe it was getting on the radio. Maybe it was doing more shows. You got to figure out why your car's not running. So, I mean, for me, in this stage of my career, and I like to say our career, if you don't mind me including you, Mm -hmm. I think that we figured out that you have to get out and check the starter. Okay, if the starter is not working, replace the starter. It may not be the starter, but replace the starter, change your tires, then go try to start your car again. You know what I mean? Get out, uh, check your radiator. You no, know, then go check your car again. If not, then go get you some gas. Fill the gas up. If the gas, if it still don't start, you know, it didn't need the gas, you know, you try something else. So you just keep going. And now if you get in it and you drive and you wreck, then that's <laughs> up to you. You know what I mean? At least you had a career. You had a chance. Yeah. Definitely. So here's your chance to like relive a musical highlight moment in your life for us, my friends. I'm sure they all were like great experiences, but which one would you choose for the most personal meaning, uh, the one that means the most to you personally? Okay. It'll have to be when we perform. I want to say for like the second time together, third time. I think the third time. For the third time together in Farmville, Virginia. Uh, for Watch my for Def Jam. And so we did the show because we knew Def Jam was going to be in the building. Um, I had just got out of a group and stopped doing music with my older cousin. Uh, because he had, a, you know, he was he's so much older than me. He had things going on in his life, man. He, you know, he wasn't really studying doing music, man. He was like, he was just in the streets, man. And, you know, I kind of was too, but I, I, had, I was... 
trying to chase the music a little harder at that time, that present time. And uh, and so I was doing some songs that I had recorded with him, you know, just like the verse of my, you know, my verse on the songs because, uh, you know, he couldn't be there. And uh, we got up there, we performed, and we killed it, man. We did so good. I mean, we had fans taking pictures with us and yeah. jumping in our pictures. And oh, wow. we had people cheering and, yeah. and, and, and uh, all of that stuff, man. I mean, it was just amazing. Like, we, yeah. we killed it so hard and every artist after us started trying to imitate our performance. It, and it wasn't just me <laughs> because I was the hype man, okay? So, he was the main attraction. I made sure that he was the main star. So, it seemed like, and I'm not going to lie to you, it was the most strangest thing. Every, because, you know, Wise McGriff was there, so it was like, I need to get his attention too. I see what uh, G-Swag doing, so I want to do the same thing. So, <laughs> They get up there taking their shirt off because he took his shirt off at the show. <laughs> you know, they're taking his shirt off and they was like hand movements and everything. It was crazy, but I felt like that was like inspiration. You know, I didn't take it as all oh, they trying to take his style. I took it as I'm glad because we we come from Illinois, so for us to come to to the VA and perform, they get that much love. It was yeah, amazing. that's I pretty mean, cool. To have people, you know. And they, it. Yeah, and they don't know you from night and day. They just thought your music and your performance was. <laughs> dope. That's one thing I could say. Like, well, like when we live out there, the East Coast, like they see you doing your, your making moves, and you doing good. They show so much they love. Support you, that's for sure. They show like lots of love. And so, like, <laughs> yeah, all right. Rough. So to finish the story, so to finish the story, you know, and we got out there, we did so good. We didn't win the contest itself, but we ended up getting a call from Wiseman Griffin's Dev Jam, <clears throat> and for me, that just kind of like changed our life. You know what I mean? And I think at the time, because I ended up uh, signing a consultational deal with Watson Griffin Def Jam, yeah. that's kind of where that led. Um, I never made it to sign it directly with the label, but, you know, because I was young and, you know, you feel like you know everybody <laughs> owe you and the world owe you and really nobody owe you nothing. Mm-hmm. And that's how, like, artists, so, that's like how, as an artist, you will mess your chance up if you feel like somebody's going to give you something or you exactly. already know and the chance is like right there your opportunity is like right there you know and, and that happens to all artists they get it everybody get a chance I don't yeah. care who it is everybody get a chance and an opportunity at something that's it's right. all about if you're going to mess it up or not <laughs> so that was like I had that's, that's the moment that I really we relive every day you know and uh, the fact that we in my opinion we got discovered you know what I mean we yeah. got discovered you know and so now for us it's just can we get rediscovered can we get discovered again can we get labels calling again like we had before because before we had Sony calling we had uh, Atlantic call Atlantic call right before we did the show with Def Jam so that was like we was on cloud nine I think that's what propelled us to to do such a good job because we had just got a call from uh, Atlantic but I think uh, there was some hurricane yeah it was a hurricane it was like five years ago so at that time it was like a hurricane and um, you know they got hit pretty bad and so up there. They, they got hit exactly <laughs> where they called us from because when we called them, they said, "Oh, you know, due to so and so." No, the phone like it was beat. Right. Oh yeah. yeah the like next a, day, I called and they, yeah, the power and all that. It was crazy that year. <laughs> Definitely. But they did call, you know. So I thought that was pretty cool too. So yeah, I really lived that all the time, man. It was just, I think it was just dope. A, a, a guy from Mounds, Illinois. Uh, a, 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 a chick from Mount Not Vernon, Virginia, Illinois, yeah. and for us to be somewhere in Virginia, because the club was like in the woods or something like that, it was like insane. But anyway, you know, with us being all the way there by ourselves, we had we had no entourage, we had no family, we had no support. Not saying we had support, we had supporters from afar, but. Not having nobody right there and for us to do such a good job and to also get discovered by a major label, it was just awesome. Yeah, because the, the most challenging to me is to see uh, all these artists come in and they got a team full of people. Right. Like family, friends, and fans. And it's just, when we did our shows, it was just me and him. <laughs> mm. And just to get, you know, the crowd and artists to be like, man, that's what's up, you know, and for us to come that far for them to show us love that did mean a lot so if you could be in a room and not know nobody as an artist and drawing them people man man you, you can win, win the crowd every time amazing, yeah. yeah you can win every it's time <laughs> you can win anywhere yeah. 
All right, guys, websites, you got them, we want them, we need them. Where should we be sending people online to find out more about GC, your music, and everything concerning the duo, the dynamic duo? <laughs> okay, uh, with us, uh, oh, this, just to be clear, it ain't, nobody's uh, robbing. <laughs> uh, but, uh, so, uh, you can go and check us out at uh, G Swag and Chills on Instagram. Same thing on Twitter, G Swag and Chill. Yeah. Uh, our Twitter and our Instagram, they brand spanking new, so we don't yeah. have many followers. So we need everybody listening right now to go to twitter.com, go to instagram.com. Actually, go to Twitter first, go to G Swag and Chills. Go follow us, then go to Instagram and do the same. Yeah, yeah. Though we just everybody uh, watching also on our Facebook Live, please go follow us right now. We need to follow it. We need to follow it because our our uh, pages are brand spanking yeah, new. Like we don't have new. we don't have that many followers. It's not like our personal page. So please go follow GC on Twitter and Instagram. GC on Instagram and Twitter. G Swag and Chills. Gotcha. All right, just in case you guys <laughs> did not get those links. I already typed them out for you in the, in the description of the show, so all you got to do is click that link. I did all the hard work for you. Thank me later. No, you can thank me now. But Yeah, <laughs> yeah thank you. Thank you, man. No, no I was man. talking to the listeners. The <laughs> yeah, I was talking yeah. to the listeners, though. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we're at the actual part of the show that everybody loves. So, after the music <laughs> break, it'll be time for our usual tradition. It is called the hot seat because sometimes it will literally make you sweat. Um, our fans love this part of the segment, of course, along with the actual interview, but the audience will get to hear either you guys provide us with some raw vocals, like some la-la-la, or a poem, inspirational <laughs> speech, maybe you'll bust a freestyle rap, tell us a joke or a story, or maybe even whip out a live instrument. Maybe that y- Yamaha uh, keyboard is still around somewhere. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <little piano. laughs> Anywho, you never know what these creative minds and vessels were producing the spotlight. And tonight we'll find out if G-Swag and Chills have what it takes to be put on the spot, a test of their true artistry, and maybe even some hidden talents. But for right now, we have GC with their boss. I mean, with their song, Boss. I just messed it all up. <laughs> Here we go. We'll be right back. Next level. Man, we done made ourselves bosses. It is. Uh. I made myself a boss. Now it's time for me to floss. I made myself a boss. Cause f- you thought. I made myself a boss. Now it's time for me to floss. I made myself a boss You thought I can give your ass a job I can make your ass a job I practice what I preach When I'm off in these streets I don't really got no friends Enough to shoot a missile. I'm so official, I'ma need a whistle. Red dot on you like a fucking pimple. Put some lead in your number two pencil. Stop fucking like a stampede. Stop it with some fucking metal cleats. I'm a boss, y'all employees. No wildfire, but we burn the trees. Come around with me, it be a long night. You can catch my shell like a rock's wife. Nah, no, you ain't fucking fear, cause like a pap smell. I'ma buy my bread like dominoes. Buy my nose, leave common toast. Everybody tough until I bust them. Just leave the crowd running like I'm a I'm in my cell phone. Now it's time for me to floss. I made myself a boss. You thought I made myself a boss. Now it's time for me to floss. I made myself a boss. You thought I made myself a boss. I can do now what I want. I can spend now what I want. Yeah, yeah. 
that's trying to stunt. I need my money back. Hold it up to that true so flag. Long. Salute to my real niggas that never fold that I never made myself a boss. Now it's time for me to floss. I made myself a boss. You thought. I made myself a boss. Now it's time for me to floss. I made myself a boss. You thought. How would you love to take your business to the next level? Well, now you can. Just visit ClassyTechnology.com. Let us simplify technology for your business. Our services include website and business mobile app development, local SEO, business technology coaching, digital marketing, even online training courses. That's ClassyTechnology.com. Why wait? Book your free technology consultation today by calling 734 215 7675. Put the passion back into your business and let the team at Classy Technology handle everything for you. That's ClassyTechnology.com, the technology stylists. All right, guys, we're back. Man, I think after listening to that track, I really have a new uh, outlook on life as a boss. It's like, yo, either I can give you a job or you can be the job. Ooh, that's some slick gangster talk right there, boy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, that's a, that is definitely a boss song. I like that. All right, so the greatest quote in history ever is by the man Popeye. He says, I am what I am, and that's it. There's nothing else after that. I am what I am. Same thing I told my wife. I am what I am. Love me or leave me. <laughs> she said, man, if you don't get in there and clean that mess up. So I couldn't be, you know, lazy and just throwing my clothes anywhere. That's, that's what I normally do. When I get in, I just take off my clothes and they just fall wherever I walk. So she's trying to make me a better person. But for now, I am what I am. No. <laughs> All right. So things are the way they are. You are the person that you are. Your life is the way it is. You can either accept those things or make yourself miserable about them. There are no doubt many things you think you, sh you should have done and many other things you wish you had not done. Accept those things. You cannot change them by pretending they did or didn't happen. Take a deep breath and relax. Accept the person you are. Accept the people and the world around you now here's my disclaimer because I'm always pushing for you know being a better version of yourself only accept this person if you're not satisfied okay if you're satisfied yeah accept it you know hey I like to take my clothes off at the door part of my religion not really but when you say that it gives it like some realness you know like oh okay I don't want to offend whatever it is you yeah so whatever you do just say hey it's a part of my religion and they won't they won't go into too much now if they start asking questions I, I, I can't help you there but if you're not totally satisfied with who you are maybe you got some bad habits to just screwing up your life then no do not accept that person because there's always a better version of yourself that you can become so acceptance doesn't mean that you have to be passive which doesn't mean you have to lie down and take it you know there's something you want to change then take action to change it acceptance doesn't mean that you approve of or support something it just means that you see it for what it is that you don't deceive yourself about it like you know you're not saying that you're a vegan but on the weekends you eat turkey sandwiches uh, part time vegan 
Where you do that at? You know, acceptance will help you to see clearly, to learn, and to grow. Think of a baby learning to walk. When he stumbles and falls, he doesn't get depressed. My kid did. He actually threw a fit. He fell. Man, or paranoid, or embarrassed, or angry. You know, babies, they get right back up. They won't develop a guilt complex or ulcers or high blood pressure thinking about not walking. They don't try to pretend like the fall didn't happen. <laughs> like, oh, you didn't see that. <laughs> they simply pull themselves back up to the nearest supporting object and keep it moving. They try again, accepting the fact that he'll have to fall many times before learning to walk. How many times have you seen a baby just fall on over and just roll? Especially the, 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 the chubby ones, they just, they roll with the fall. And they get right back on the knees and try to find something else to get right back up. That is a life lesson there, you know? In an environment of acceptance, true learning and growth have to take place. Bring peace, bring patience, learning and accomplishment to your life by practicing acceptance. Take that from me, Dini Mussolini, that is my word, and word is bun. So let's bring on the duo, the couple of the year. GC, you're back live in our hot seat. What do you have for us? Yo, what's up, what's up, what's up? Back live in the back. Oh yeah. So, uh, I don't know, I guess I can, I can freestyle something for you. Awesome. <laughs> Like, I don't got to be, so I'm just going to rap. <laughs> nah, all right, we'll take it. Uh, yo, G-Swag bitch flow colder than January. And they don't want no problems because the bars like fucking mixed flurry. Every time that I spit, they know it's a wish. So close your eyes and you come with a, with your favorite gift. Yo, I'm about to do it like I'm supposed to. And I keep the fucking heat with me exposure. Tell your girlfriend better go head back back. g Swag scoring from the field with some perfect stats. Oh. Tell them they better chill, they better quit playing. g Swag, if you a dragon, then I'm fucking slam. Ah. Spin five from my nose and my nostrils. I told Whoa. them stop playing, boy. I'm coming with a posture. Uh -huh. It's the posture. you thinking that you're fucking with me, my pockets, they swole like hippopotamus. Mm. Hungry, hungry hippo, nigga. And I don't play games. All I do is squeeze that trigger. Oh. G-Swag, I'm hotter than a sunbeam, nigga. And you don't want no problems. I make them bounce like Tigger. Uh, your girl, she ain't playing. She just show respect. She bouncing in my crotch like she got springs on her forehead. Oh, oh, her neck a pogo stick. She took that cake and she made that wish. But fuck <laughs> that shit. I come through with nothing but this and that and cock back. And now these niggas on their back. Hold up, call an ambulance, call a coroner. I ain't playing, and these fans, they ain't fucking studying you. Every time you start rapping, man, they start snowing, bruh. I just think you motherfucking born, bruh. I don't know, I'm just going, bruh. I'm scoring, bruh. I ain't playing games, I'm like Kobe, bruh. Uh, uh, and I just do it like a real G. These niggas think they hot, but they ain't really hot, G. I tell them, take your hands out the fridge. I tell them what gears are sweating. I ain't playing, tell your girl how my kids taste. Oh, shit, man, they misplaced. Man, they couldn't slide with the game. I spit if they was on skates. Well, <laughs> I told these niggas that I'm too dope. These niggas couldn't hang even if they had the shortest rope. Mm, mm. And I'm going like I'm on coke. I meant to say I'm going and I'm going and I'm too dope. I'm like the North Pole. I'm on froze. I'm like St. Nick. I should be wearing his clothes or wearing his robe. I swear shit ain't stole off the top of my head. And these niggas is dead. I swear I... Go and call for the casket instead. These niggas is playing. I'm whipping their head like I'm they dead. So play games and open up your shit by your man. Damn, I don't know. I'm on the radio snapping. I put on like decorations. My hood, they should be clapping. Stumping their feet. Fuck it, I don't know the feet. So enter the zone and you can meet the beast. These niggas on my plate, so I'm a feast. And everything I do, all I know is eat. Eat. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she going back to the old days when she was your hype man, eh? Oh. <laughs> we we thought we give your show a little entertainment. Yeah, that, that spirit came on her. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. She swag. All right. I hear you. That's a little bit. You want to say something? No. <laughs> 
show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you good for this? Yeah, time. I'm good for this time. Maybe next time. Okay, okay, we'll hold you to it. We'll hold you to it. Next time you dropping a single, just come on Vigilante Radio before we can start the show. I'm like, yo, we have to get that. Uh, have to get that about the chills. So go ahead, kick it okay. off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was dope. That was dope, swag. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, he he loved the freestyle, so that's him. That's All right, what and he I'm gonna put a couple bars for her. Okay, right, okay. I'm gonna spit a couple bars for her, and I'm gonna do some damage. <laughs> Man, your girl, her legs spread like like mayonnaise on a turkey sandwich. Fuck it, I'm in this bitch. I'm doing it like I'm supposed to. The girl already know that boy just posted. Oh. I need my mail. I told her I ain't playing games, and I won't do it until she get nailed to the cross. Fuck it, I'm so cold, I make her jump crisscross. Man, I got that bounce. Smoking on nothing but the best weed. Man, we roll it by the ounce. Man, wow. did I do it to him? Oops, I pulled up and shit on you and your whole entire crew. Take your girlfriend, toss off the glass. That's alley you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And that's what you do. <laughs> that's vicious, man. Thank yeah. you, man. I like freestyle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I get it. I, I get to there with them sometimes. What you feeling? Yeah, when I'm feeling it. That was dope. Any last words before we part ways? Uh, we appreciate you. Yeah, you know, thank you so time. much so, for having um, us on Vigilante yeah. Radio. We thank you so much for your time, brother. And the conversation was awesome. The interview yeah. was dope. Um, I wish you the most success in the whole entire world, man. Yeah. We plan to come back on if that's okay with you. One yeah. Oh, man, you guys are always welcome. Even when you got millions <laughs> in the bank, you know, you can come on Vigilante Radio so you can help us get millions in our bank, right? And that's yeah, how, that's, 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 that's what we do. <laughs> yeah, hey, and, and, and vice we versa. Talked about that. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And vice yeah, because we just talked about that. <laughs> yeah, so you, see, you see me sitting next to Charlamagne, like, hey, let me call up Denny and see if we can get a spot. Oh, man, you got, right, yeah, I, got you. Go. I got you. Like, remember me? <laughs> you remember me? Remember these wagon chicks? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, bit that bar about alley ooping chicks off a of back, boy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, man, you guys are great. You guys are no, awesome, man. Exactly. You're going to kill it for 2018 and beyond. I already know it. Thank, Thank you man. so Appreciate much. It, and same to you, too. Much love, bro. Much love. Thank you, my Vigilantes family, as always, for checking out my podcast over here at Vigilantes Radio. All episodes are available for free download, and you can grab that from either Spricker.com forward slash only one media group, iTunes, YouTube, any app that's on a Google Play or iTunes store or our website. And that goes from every single episode that we've ever aired. If you'd like to request music or a particular guest or send something for me to play, email it to the radio at only one media group dot com. If it's music, please label it by artist and title. Here's my disclaimer. We are genre free. We do not judge and we absolutely do not base our opinions on hearsay, but facts alone. And actually, you can scratch all of that because all of my opinions are always right. That's the bottom line. This is my show. So deal with it. Nah, just kidding. On behalf of myself, Danny Mussolini, I appreciate all you guys for tuning in either afterwards or live with us. Spread the word because sharing is caring. We stepped up our game just for you guys and our guests to make sure that you have the best experience here on our show. Be sure to connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, as well as Spricker. We always follow back. That is the number one rule. Okay, well, just remember to be yourself and be absolutely great at just doing that. Avoid being too comfortable because you're messing with your potential when you do that. Peace and have a good night. You 
are now listening to Vigilantes Radio, the people's choice for quality interviews, art, music, and hot topics. Hosted by Demetrius Houdini Black Reynolds of the duo No Longer the Hero. All episodes of this podcast are available for free download at www.onlyonemediagroup.com. This is a seventh sign regime, Rebirth Worldwide Syndicate exclusive. you love to take your business to the next level? Well, now you can. Just visit ClassyTechnology.com. Let us simplify technology for your business. Our services include website and business mobile app development, local SEO, business technology coaching, digital marketing, even online training courses. That's ClassyTechnology.com. Why wait? Book your free technology consultation today by calling 734-215-7675. Put the passion back into your business and let the team at Classy Technology handle everything for you. That's ClassyTechnology.com, the technology stylists.